Good morning, Washington. This is Dave TV for the uh, 3rd of uh, March, 2012, and I got the year right. <laughs> Washington Post today, bum rush. Look at that. This is on the editorial page. Look at that. They got the major edit two editorials, and there's Rush there. At the end. They, uh, it's kind of like, um, you know, I, I love these people. Rush Limbaugh says all this crazy stuff every day. And most of it just kind of, you know, you see it on sites like Mediaite and a few of the other media sites. But the mainstream media, you know, doesn't pay a lot of attention to what Rush says. And then all of a sudden he says something and boom, it goes viral. <laughs> so the other day Rush gets on the air and, uh, you know, in his jocular, joking kind of way, makes fun of uh, Georgetown Law student Sandra Fluke. Now Sandra said that she, you know, was advocating... Um, Obama health care mandate stuff, whatever that, you know, that employers or schools or whatever have to provide contraceptive costs within health care insurance stuffy buffy, whatever that's all about. Okay. Limbaugh doesn't like that. And he's like, he gets on the air and he calls her a slut and a prostitute and uh, says that, you know, if, if, if the taxpayers are supposed to be supporting or, you know, subsidizing contraception, uh, that, that he should be able to see videos of her having sex. You know, uh, okay, funny, jocular, crazy, whatever. But, yeah, you know, they're talking about a pri he's talking about a private citizen here who's advocating something, and she's a college student, and here's this big, fat, rotund... It's just, it's like... It's like what Don Imus did a couple years ago, the nappy-headed hose thing. These guys just, they get on the air, they say so much, they say so much, they say so much, and it just goes by the wayside, and then all of a sudden they say something, and then boom, the media latches on it, and bang, 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 the, all the house of cards falls. Uh, interesting, interesting little uh, piece here today in uh, the Post. So read that. It's, uh, it's well written. And... Uh, <laughs> And of course, the post also, you know, it, the post also covers it on page one here. Uh, where is it here? President calls student blasted by Rush Limbaugh. <sighs> you know, if you take some time and you sit down and you listen to some of these people on the radio, you're kind of sh almost shocked by what they say. You know, I do listen to Limbaugh on a regular basis, and I listen to, like, Chris Plant and other people like that. And, you know, they're funny, and they are kind of jocular, and they are kind of amusing. But sometimes they say stuff that really is quite over the line. And it's like it's like when you're saying stuff on the radio, it's like just out there. You know, boom, oh, I wish I hadn't said that. And you just cross your fingers and hope no one notices. Um, there's an awful lot of stuff you hear and you go, oh my God, did he really mean that? Making jokes about certain politicians and their demises and their infidelities and, and really nasty stuff. And you hear a lot of that. If you really sit and listen to all three hours of Rush Limbaugh or all three hours of Chris Plan or all three hours of John Andy or all three hours of Michael Savage or some of these other righty talkers or some of the lefty talkers, I'm, you know, they probably do the same thing, although, you know, the, the righty ones are the ones that seem to be generate the most notoriety. Um, it's just amazing what some of the stuff they say. And, he, and one of the things that's one of the things that's missing from those Washington Post articles <laughs> is WMAL. It'd be interesting if if the Post had called WMAL Bill Hess, who who's who's the head of the station and uh, you know DC radio veteran, and said, "Hey, Bill, what do you think of Russia's comments?" At least, oh, no comment for Bill Hess. Or it'd be interesting. You know, a lot of these stations just take a pass on, well, we just plug into the satellite and it goes out on our airwaves. You know, we pay the electric bill and we sell the ads, but whatever they say, it's not our fault because we just plug in and he says whatever he wants to say. You know, I wish some of these local stations would take a little responsibility for for some of the even syndicated shows they run and say, okay, if we run it, then we at least have a responsibility to be, be answerable for what is said. And nowhere in those post pieces today is there any um, answerability from WMAL. You know, WMAL should at least, you know, they should at least have called someone over there and said, hey, what do you think this is going out on your station to, you know, the Washington audience? Here's a guy on your station. He may not work for you guys directly, but he's going out on your station. He's saying something really nasty about a Georgetown student. What do you have to say about that? Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I don't know. Okay, pet peeve. One of my pet peeves. <laughs> Speaking of the Washington Post, one of my pet peeves. Um, you look at their sports section, and they often have the uh, they always have the uh, TV listings and the radio listings for sports events. Okay, and they always list. WTEM is this. Okay, if there's some sports event on WTEM, they always say it's on WWXT 92.7, WWXX 94.3, and WTEM 980. Okay, now WTEM is one radio station, okay, and they broadcast, just happen to broadcast on three different signals. So why don't they just simplify things over there and just do this? Call it WTEM, they're on 980 AM, 92.7, and 94.3 FM. You know, wouldn't that be simpler? When they list WFED... <laughs> They always just say this, WF, you know, the, 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 the capitals or whatever on WFED, they just say WFED 820, 1500, even though 820 is a Frederick station with different call letters, okay? Um, you know, they don't list all the different call letters of all the different frequencies. Likewise, I really think the post should get smart and just go like this, or call it ESPN 980, and also on 92.7 and 94.3. That would certainly be easier. It's not a big deal, but it is one of my pet peeves. Uh, you, sometimes you wonder, is anybody home at the Washington Post? Is anybody paying attention? <laughs> uh, some uh, some sad news this week. Uh, a number of deaths. Davy Jones died, Andrew Breitbart died, and a local radio veteran, Jim London, died. Um, I'm still waiting for the Post to write anything about Jim London. In fact, it would be interesting to see if the Post... Uh, let me, while I'm thinking of it here, let's see if the Post has written anything about Jim London. Do, 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 do. Let's see. Okay, search the Washington Post. Jim London. Do, 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 do. Nope. I don't see nothing here. Nothing. Yeah. What's up with that? Uh, maybe they'll get to the a bit next week. I don't know. It's just it's sad. Washington Post, uh, day late and a dollar. They're even a day late and a dollar short on this Limbaugh story. It broke in the media and on a lot of things, and it was just yesterday that the Post actually started to report a little bit about it. Uh, <laughs> Jim London, uh, 66 years old, passed away on February 28th down in Largo, Florida. I guess that's where he was living at the time. Uh, he'd worked at WMZQ for many years. Um with Mary Ball doing the morning show for many years, and then he came back to WMZQ and did middays for a while, up until 2007. Uh, Jim also worked at uh, Oldies WBIG, and the old country kicks 106, 105, nine, back when it was a country station, back in the early 80s. Um, really cool guy. I've, he, he emailed me a couple times. You know, he had a lot of run-ins. I didn't have a lot of run-ins with people, but... He did have, you know, he, there was the, he was trying to, you know, deal with the radio business. With all the, cu you know, all the, the cutting and the voice tracking and, you know, he, was, he saw, you know, it was, it was hard for him and I think in his later years to uh, come to terms with a lot of the way the radio business had changed over the years, you know. And, uh, and uh, you know, he, he loved the business. He loved being on the radio and he was seeing a business of his kind of get changed by the big corporate shenanigans and all that. And, uh, you know, I don't think he liked it, how it was changing. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure that, you know, when he left WMZQ in 2007, he'd have loved to stay for longer. <laughs> and he did actually had a website where he was saying, hey, I'd be happy to work for your station. You know, so uh, good guy there, um, Jim London there at uh, – at uh, w, the long time WMCQ. So then I went and decided, let's pull up some, uh, oh gosh, what am I doing here on this computer? Let's pull up some WMZQ memories, shall we? Here's a, here's a few. Let's listen to, listen, listen to some jingles from MZQ. <laughs> And how about this one? And how about this one? Da -da -da. That's short and sweet. To the point. <laughs> uh, all right, folks. That's my Dave TV for today. Saturday, the 3rd of March, 2012. One more little appeal here. 
Um, DCRDV relies on you guys for a lot of for a good chunk of our operating expenses every month uh, from your donations. You know we've been doing that for 15 years, and you've always come through. If you haven't helped DCRTV lately. How about sending us some bucks, you know? We get advertisers, and we love our advertisers, and I do some freelance work, and I help pay the bills here. But your donations are an integral component in our operations, fundraising, schemey thingy, dingy, wingy, bingy. So anyhow, if you have a few bucks, doesn't matter, five bucks, ten bucks, five hundred bucks, whatever, uh, go to a DCRTV support page right there at the top of uh, – the link there says support. You can send some money over via PayPal or you can mail us a check or whatever. Greatly appreciated. And as I say, no no donation is unappreciated. No donation is too small today. <laughs> so thanks for watching Dave TV today. Uh, have a great weekend. And so then.